A Dog Named Duke by William D. Ellis is a story based on the relationship of a dog and his master. This is a story about how a dog changed the life of his master. Let us go back in time. 1953 Chuck Charles Hooper was a favored young man. Everything was going well for him. He was already a zone sales manager for a chemical company. One day, while driving home, he met with a horrible car accident. He was taken to a hospital with a subdural hemorrhage and a completely paralyzed left side of the body. Hooper remained on the critical list for a month. His company asked him to take a year off and promised to create a desk job for him at headquarters. Chuck Hooper's paralyzed arm and leg were given a special treatment in the hospital. Every day, there was someone working his paralyzed arm and leg by baths, exercises, a wheeled walker. But Chuck didn't make much improvement. In March, they let him out of the hospital. But here, Hooper hit a new low. His wife Marcy went to work. He was lonely and lost in his thoughts. Slowly, his condition worsened because of the boredom he suffered. Finally, Chuck Hooper's beloved dog Duke was called home from the kennel. When Duke saw Hooper, he jumped on him causing him to fight to keep his balance. The intelligent dog realized his mistake. He never jumped on Chuck Hooper again. The two, Hooper and Duke, used to stare at each other day in and day out. Chuck Hooper felt lonely and was always lost in his thoughts. Duke finally couldn't stand the boredom and yearned to go out with his master. One evening, Chuck's good hand idly hooked the leash into Duke's collar to hold him still. For Duke, it was like lighting a fuse. With Hooper standing, the dog walked to the end of the leash and tugged steadily. Leaning back against the pull, Hooper learned to keep his balance without his wife Marcy. Duke's re-entry into Hooper's life lifted his numb spirits. The day Duke made Hooper take his first step, hope was rekindled. By now, neighbors on their street were watching the pattern of Hooper's progress. On June 1, Hooper and Duke walked up to an intersection quite far away. On January 4, Hooper surprised the staff by walking to the local branch office of the company. Hooper further amazed his staff by setting his next objective, March 1, a full day's work. After March 1, Hooper had no time for physiotherapy and depended completely on Duke. Duke pulled him along the street, increasing Hooper's stability and endurance. On the evening of October 1957, the Hoopers had a party with some guest. Suddenly, they heard a screech of brakes outside and looked for Duke. Duke was run over and driven to the animal hospital with severe injuries. He was drugged but could not survive. A few weeks ago, Hooper was promoted to assistant national sales manager. The promotion order was so worded 
as if it was a special tribute to Duke. Therefore, to advance our objective step by step, Charles Hooper is appointed Assistant National Sales Manager. Actually, it was Duke who advanced Hooper's objective step by step and made him a normal man.